What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you all are swell. We are taking a look at my personal rig today and we're going to look at how I put it together and how I chose the parts that I did. Stay tuned. Alrighty guys, so as promised we are going over all of the parts that I chose for my rig and we're going to dive into why I chose the parts that I did. But a little bit of backstory first, I haven't gamed on a desktop computer in at least seven years, the entire time that I've been married. So what's been getting me by so far is an Alienware 17, I bought it about five years ago and it's been a good workhorse and it's uh, it's got me through my college days and it's been a sufficient gaming computer but it, now it's starting to show its age so it's been a journey picking out all of these parts and I'm super happy that it's finally here I've been lurking over these parts for months and watching all of the benchmark videos and all of the reviews and I'm stoked to finally have it all together so there's a couple different factors that I want you to keep in mind here as you're watching the build one this is not a budget build whatsoever Abby and I are both really big on playing the long game and we both subscribe to the philosophy that we should spend more up front so we don't have to spend more later on. So we're trying to get that part with the finances all out of the way and uh, you'll see that in some of these parts. And the second thing I want you to keep in mind is that this build's going right in between our dining room and our living room. And the glass side panel is actually facing everybody in the living room, so the inside of this build needs to look as good as it possibly can. So that's why you're going to see some RGB lighting, you're going to see a black and white theme. That's the theme that Abby and I decided on because both of those colors are pretty color neutral. And you're also going to see a motherboard that we chose mostly for the aesthetics, but we had to sacrifice maybe a couple features, but we gained one as well. So, really looking forward to that. <sighs> Alright, so... We are about to put all of these things together and put it in this bad boy. Now, I will say the explanation for some of these products and um, why I chose the products that I did might be a little bit lengthier than normal. Um, the reason being, I just wanted to share every idea I had to make it look as cool as I possibly could. So um, keep that in mind, but there will be a table of contents below if you want to skip to the building process itself or you just want to look at the finished product. So that being said, let's dive in. All right, starting off here, we have the Ryzen 9 3900X, uh, 12 cores, 24 threads, 105 watt TDP, 3.8 gigahertz base clock, and a 4.6 gigahertz boost clock. And for what it does, it's one of the most fairly priced and powerful CPUs on the market. If I was only focused on gaming, I would have heavily considered the Intel 9900K, but because I'm going to be streaming and video editing as well, this CPU is a pretty easy decision. Um, something worth noting as well is that this CPU comes with a Wraith Prism cooler, which we won't be using today, but still adds a pretty cool value. <laughs> See what I did there? Alright, moving on to our motherboard here. So we are putting in an ASUS Prime X570 Pro Edition. So originally we wanted to put in an Aorus X570 Pro Wi-Fi board, but aesthetically this board is much more pleasing and it goes a lot better with our overall theme of black and white. Some people will say, oh man, you're sacrificing uh, features for aesthetics. And that's somewhat true, but again, this is an aesthetically driven build and this board actually has three PCIe slots, whereas the Aorus Pro Wi-Fi only has two and then a regular old PCI slot. That being said, the Aorus Pro Wi-Fi has, you guessed it, Wi-Fi, and it has multiple M.2 heat sinks, whereas this one only has one. It has two M.2 slots, so if you're going to buy another M.2, then you need to make sure that you buy one with a heat sink that comes with it. And now moving on to our RAM, we have a white Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro 32 gigabyte kit at 3600 megahertz. So 3600 megahertz is that really nice sweet spot for Ryzen. Um, and of course, that white color is just going to look so nice with all the RGB. And of course, we have our cooling. So we will be attempting to keep our CPU as chilly as possible with the Corsair H115i Platinum 280 millimeter AIO liquid cooler. Now, the good news was that Corsair's regular fans are already black and white, which is perfect for our build. Bad news was that this cooler comes with Corsair's ML140 Pro RGB fans, and those are fantastic fans. See what I did? 
Once again, I'm full of them today. Now, those fans have a ton of cooling power and are extremely quiet due to their magnetic levitation technology. But, they only come with 4 RGB LED lights compared to the 16 RGB LEDs in the LL series. And we just can't have that as this is a pretty aesthetically driven build. So, because of how important those aesthetics are to my wife and myself, to be honest, we're swapping those fans out with two of the LL series fans. And in addition to those, we have an additional two hundred two one hundred and forty millimeter and two one hundred and twenty millimeter Corsair LL series fans. We'll get into why we chose the amounts of each size after the build, but um, one other thing to note is we'll actually also be putting in Corsair RGB LED strips in this thing as well. So these are clearly the most important part of the build. One hundred percent, no doubt. And now, everybody's favorite part, the graphics card. Going into this PC is an EVGA GeForce RTX 2080 Super For The Win 3 hybrid card. <sighs> that was a mouthful. This card actually has an 1845 megahertz boost clock, so um, not that different than the original 2080, but hey, it was at a similar price point and I got it on sale at the time. And uh, it also came with Modern Warfare, so no complaints here. I went with a hybrid cooling solution in order to minimize the amount of hot air that's produced in the case without sacrificing the thermals of the card itself. Additionally, going over both the CPU AIO tubing and this hybrid card's tubing are... White cable mod sleeves. These sleeves are pretty flexible and they're easy to install since they're just round cable sleeves with a slit down the middle to wrap around your tubing. So a black card casing and white tubing are really going to help us stay consistent with our theme. Moving on to our boot drive here, this is a Sabrent 500GB Rocket NVMe PCIe Gen 4 M.2 SSD. Oh man, I gotta figure out a way to shorten this stuff. That'll be going under the ASUS Prime Pro's heatsink. This drive hits up to 5000 megabytes per second read speed and 2500 megabytes per second write speed and has that ever popular Fison controller. Pretty happy about that. Additionally, for storage, we have <laughs> uh, an additional NVMe drive. So, this is the Corsair 4 Series MP600 2 terabyte drive, which has a very similar read speed as the Sabrent drive, but has up to 4250 megabytes per second sequential write speeds, which is just ridiculous. I'm also happy with the plain black heat sink with the tiny white lettering on top. All right, powering this rig today, we are putting in a white Corsair RM series 850X, which is fully modular, and because it's part of the RM series, it's extremely quiet. Now, as you can see here, our case has a basement, so this PSU isn't even going to be visible, but I wanted to ensure we had a solid, good-looking PSU in case we ever move on to another case in the future. Uh, now, this PSU did come with white cables, but they just weren't the best looking, so I went ahead and bought some Fantex extension cables, and they have that nice material right there that we all know and love. Let's see if you can get a good close-up of it. There it is. And we have some black cable combs to add a nice little accent onto those white wires. So really wanted to make sure we had that premium look um, with all the cables and even though the PSU is not going to be visible, the PSU itself. Now real quick here, in order to capture gameplay and anything else on screen that I might deem worthy to go in video, I'll be using an Elgato Game Capture 4K60 Pro, which also has flashback recording so we can save those awesome moments as they come. And last, but certainly not least, the Fantax Enthu Pro Full Tower Tempered Glass Edition case. So, as you can see, I've removed the tempered glass just for the sake of showing you guys what's going on in here. Um, it actually swings on hinges, which is pretty cool. Um, for the sake of setting it up, it doesn't make it the easiest thing to do, but once it's all said and done, Pretty uh, pretty nifty feature, so happy about that. First reason I chose th this case was the airflow. We have some amazing airflow in this case. 
We have the mesh up front. Always love that. You have dust filters on the uh, front bottom and the rear bottom. Super easy to do. On top we have magnetic dust filters and plenty of mesh up top, plenty of mesh on bottom. And then, of course, we have plenty of ventilation in the rear as well. Happy about that. Um, second reason we chose this case, pretty obvious. Uh, comes with white interior and uh, black exterior. Goes really well with our theme. Um, I don't need to drive that home any more than I already have. Third is cable management. Look at all the rubber grommets. Look at all the little slits and everything. It just makes cable management a dream. On the back side here, when you open up this back panel, um, it comes pre-installed with cable ties. Everything's mounted where it needs to go. It's a fantastic case and I would recommend it to anyone. Oh, something I wanted to point out. This case actually came pre-installed with hard drive bays and an SSD bracket. I went ahead and removed everything because I wanted a more open and grand look. Again, I'm going for aesthetics. I think that's a really big part since it's going to be right in the middle of the dining room and the living room. Um, but most people probably keep those in because they're going to be using a lot of SATA SSDs or hard drives and that's completely legitimate. Um, this is a custom build and I was just customizing it to my needs and I am very happy with how it looks. <sighs> All right, guys, we made it. Now you know about everything that's going into my dream machine. So without further ado, let's get started. Alrighty, so as you can see, we are up and rolling. We had a boot. I was already able to install windows. I am just so thrilled that this thing is finally together. I can't tell you how happy I am after months and months of lurking for parts. What's that? Oh, oh, oh they don't care? They just, they just want to see the finished product? All right, well, let's take a look, shall we? So, obviously, this is the finished product. Da -da -da -da. So a couple placement choices here. We have the two 140 millimeter fans up top. Obviously, mathematically, it just makes sense to put both of those on the 280 millimeter radiator. Um, I also have the other two 140 millimeter fans up front for intake. Now, because this GPU is only compatible with a 120 millimeter fan, I went ahead and put another 120 millimeter fan on the rear exhaust just to make sure we have as neutral air pressure as possible. Oh, also, as I'm sure I'll have this pointed out to me, I do have the radiator for the GPU mounted on bottom. I know that's not the recommended setting and I know that's not what EVGA tells you to do, but 
aesthetically it just makes sense and I've already done a few benchmark tests to make sure that there's no drastic temperature increases and there's not and I know that it's not a direct uh, chimney flow here but because I have these two 140 millimeter fans up here I have no doubt the airflow is exactly how it needs to be so not too concerned with that and that is it. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you liked it, go ahead and hit that like button. If you want to see more like it in the future, go ahead and hit that subscribe button below. I'm super stoked to start streaming with this thing. If you want to catch any of that, catch me on Twitch at Disciple Gaming Live. Again, that's Disciple Gaming Live. I'll go ahead and put that in the description below. Alrighty, so until the next time, hope you all have a good one, and I will see you in the next video.